Hey there, it's Tank Earl, and this here is the Cat S60 phone. This is a rugged phone made by Cat, the company known for rugged things and uh, machinery and all that good jazz. It's not their first phone, but it is the first phone in the entire industry with a FLIR thermal camera built in. So until now, if you wanted to do thermal imaging on your smartphone, you pretty much had to add some sort of accessory to your iPhone or Android device. But Cat and FLIR got together and decided, hey, let's make a phone that also does thermal imaging. So that's kind of the big deal here. And of course, uh, there's a little more to this. So let me talk about this phone and walk you through it. Let's start with the front of the phone. As you see here, there's a 4.7 inch display. Contrast ratio is a bit, uh, a bit low and the viewing angles are not the greatest. A lot of reflections on the screen, um, but it's serviceable. It's a 720p display. Uh, 720 by 1280. Uh, again, 4.7 inch, but it does have a Gorilla Glass 4 since this is a rugged phone. So interestingly, there is no on-screen buttons. There are physical buttons back, home and recent apps, as you can see here. You have a five megapixel autofocus camera right here. So what's interesting about this camera is it's autofocus, as I mentioned. This is not a common thing for front facers. It's not a bad front facing camera. Um, there's a speaker here and a speaker down here above the keys. And you'll notice these little gold switches that are marked five meter or two meter on each end. These are actually little switches you can flick and they go red to make the phone waterproof to five meters. So here you go. And now I can dunk this in up to 60 minutes and five meters of water depth and nothing will happen to the phone. But you do have to remember to do this to the speakers. Uh, I'm putting them back now. And the other thing obviously you need to do, regardless of what depth of water you put this in, is close all the ports basically. So there's a headphone jack down here and you pretty much have to close that. Uh, then there is a USB port here, which you, uh, US, micro USB, which you also are gonna have to close up. And you know, these don't seem like they will last. I mean, there might, but I, I feel like for a phone that's built to be a rugged phone, either they should have done what Samsung did where the two ports are just open and waterproof uh, and you don't need any doors or, um, you know, you just uh, have some beefier, just, you know, better quality doors. This uh, other door here hides a emergency button. If you push on this, uh, I've got it configured to send a text message with my GPS location to, uh, you know, um, my spouse, which is kind of cool. I'm not going to show you that, obviously, because it's like an emergency thing. Uh, then there's a power lock key at the top here. And this button is configurable. Right now I've got it starting Chrome. Uh, and you can hold it to start another app. I don't have that configured, but you can, uh, there's basically single press, like short press and long press uh, configurable for this button. Then, um, let's see, I've given you a tour of the front. Of course, what about the right-hand side? Well, it's just a volume rocker here, nothing uh, too fancy. Let's show you the back because that's really what's the most interesting thing. Uh, you got a 13 megapixel autofocus camera here with an LED flash. It's not a bad camera, but it's not spectacular. And then there's the thermal camera hidden here. And this is the cool part. I'll show you guys that in a second. Um, and this is kind of some, uh, it's plastic, but it's kind of made to imitate carbon fiber, but it's actually a textured, which is nice because when you have this in hand, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to slip out of your hand, which is cool. Uh, so then you've got this door here that you can open. It's spring loaded and it hides the SIM slot and there's um, a micro SD card slot right here. And underneath that micro SD card slot is another SIM slot, which is, as far as I can tell, inactive and unused on this device. So this is not 100% final hardware and I'm wondering if the final hardware will have a single SIM slot or it will be a dual SIM version for some markets, but it actually has a SIM slot with contacts, just nothing happens and the software only seems to support um, the uh, single SIM. So this door I'm a little concerned with because uh, of course there's like a, a big rubber seal inside, but it's relatively easy and Again, for a device that you know wants to be waterproof uh, and shockproof and stuff, that seems to be a weak point to me. 
Uh, of course, there's uh, FLIR branding, CAT branding. You have a bunch of holes here for microphones. And that's pretty much uh, a tour of the device. There's this weird bump here. Not quite sure it's what it's meant to reminisce. Uh, it's got the FLIR logo on it. Maybe that it's uh, like an old antenna stub style thing. Of course, this doesn't matter on this phone because it's uh, um, not unibody, but it is machined aluminum and beautifully made all the way around the edge here. It feels really nice in hand, like there's no cheapness to this device, other than, as I said, the back cover is a little, feels a little cheap, this full carbon fiber, but it's really well made. Uh, and decent materials for a rugged phone. Rugged phones are always so rubbery and cheap feeling despite being really rugged. So this kind of bends the trend a little bit, but it is thick. It is 12 millimeters thick and that um, a bit more than 12, almost 13. So this is, uh, this is gonna be a problem for some people, right? All right, so what's inside? You're probably wondering. Well, it's actually no slouch. This is a pretty decent mid-range phone. It's a uh, Snapdragon 617, uh, and it's got three gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of built-in storage. And as I mentioned, there's micro SD, so you can expand that storage, which is exciting. So this is stock Android, which is really lovely. And it's Marshmallow, as you can see here, you know, everything looks like a stock Android uh, version. There is a few custom menus here in the settings for things like the programmable key and stuff like that. Um, but very uncontaminated version of Android, which is always welcome. Um, you know, really quite lovely in that sense. There's a few apps pre-installed that are kind of uh, necessary. This app toolbox is a bit cheesy. It's uh, apps for rugged phones. So it's like a mini app store of uh, rugged apps for, for this phone. I'm not quite sure I buy that, but hey, whatever. Then there is a file commander pre-installed, which is interesting. Uh, let's see, am I missing anything? A bunch of these apps I installed, obviously. Um, this is why you can co uh, configure the alarm button that's behind that, that uh, door. Uh, then you have uh, max audio, some sort of audio enhancement. You know I'm kind of against this, so I don't use these. What I wanted to show you quickly is there's an interesting app called Speaker Dry and that's designed to dry your speakers when, if they get wet. So it's not a bad, bad thing if they get wet, they just sound worse when there's water in the speaker. So this plays these tones, uh, they sound very random in volume and in pitch for a, a few minutes and um, it's supposed to kind of shake the water out of the speakers, which is an interesting thing. You don't see that too often on a phone. This is the thermal imaging app, so this is really quite cool uh, because if I put my hand down here, um, ta-da, there is my hand, you can see my ring. If I um, hit the shutter key right now, I will get an image that contains both my hand, and so I can go back and forth between my hand and the uh, the thermal view. Now you can see that it's slightly off. That's because it's a macro shot. So there I've captured my laptop and you can see that they are much more lined up now. The thermal view and the laptop. So this lets you manage your photos in a cool way. Let me show you real quick. So for example, uh, if I hit this um, and I let you do a bunch of things like you can remove, you can superimpose, you can, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Like there's, there's a bunch of really helpful tools here. You can uh, pick a different color palette for the, uh, the thermal image. And then here there's a cursor. You can, you can position that anywhere and it tells you the temperature uh, up here, which is very interesting. So I played with the FLIR stuff uh, before, the, the accessory dongles you can plug into an iPhone uh, or an Android phone, and they're cool, but this you know, adds a whole new dimension. Not only is it built in, but it's built into a rugged phone. The, you know, this is uh, IP68 compliant, it's got mil-spec rating, uh, it's rugged. You can drop this thing onto concrete from like almost two meters and nothing bad will happen to it. So. Again, I have a few reservations about the hardware, as I mentioned, these, these doors for waterproofing here are a little, seem a little flimsy, and this seems a little easy to open where the SIM and the micro SD card is. But other than that, this is a pretty solid phone, well-made, nice materials, feels good in hand. It is big for the screen size, but you know, having a bezel here is important because it protects the display from, from cracking, right? So again, 4.7 inch 720p. 
So this is a pretty solid all-around mid-range phone, but because you add the FLIR imaging to it and the ruggedness, it does come at a price, and that's $600 for an unlocked version. Now, don't, don't freak out, you know, you're getting a pretty special device, and for some people, a pretty indispensable device, because there's very few uh, rugged phones that are this cool. I mean, the Galaxy S7 Active, you're gonna say, but it's not this rugged, and uh, it certainly does not have the cool FLIR thermal imaging, which for some people is gonna be really critical. Contractors, as I said, mechanics, and some other people, right? So it's an interesting uh, idea, and I'm curious to see how the S60 will sell, how well it will do. You know, that's it in a nutshell. One more thing I wanted to mention is this, this does have a built-in battery that's not removable. It's a 3,800 milliamp hour battery, and so far my tests have shown that this is a pretty solid battery, uh, and this battery life on this device is really good. So you'd expect that. I mean, it's a thick phone, so obviously a large battery, and it's a pretty power efficient processor, Snapdragon 617, a smaller display, uh, three gigs of RAM, all that is gonna contribute to really good battery life. A few niggles then, uh, it doesn't have Wi-Fi AC, so only Wi-Fi N on 2.4 gigahertz, that's a minor little thing. On the plus side, it does have NFC, which is great, but it does not have a fingerprint reader, which means you can't, well, you probably don't want to use Android Pay because you'd have to unlock every time, uh, which is, can be a hassle. Again, another plus is the autofocus on the front-facing camera, kind of a cool, unexpected feature. It's not in the spec sheet. Uh, and then, you know, last but not least, the display could be better. As I said, it's not bad, but it's a little bit low on contrast ratio and viewing angles. Of course, you're gonna ask me, so how good is the main camera on this, right? Because we talked about the FLIR imaging, we talked about the front facing. It's a decent camera, as I said, it's a bit, you know, iffy uh, in terms of low light and contrast ratio could be better, but it makes usable photos that are perfectly uh, serviceable. So it's nothing to write home about. In, in that sense, the whole phone is very mid-range, but, you know, a very unique approach to a mid-range phone. All right, folks, stay tuned. Please subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter at TankGirl, T-N-K-G-R-L. Go to my blog, TNKGRL.com, etc., etc. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll have more for you soon. Cheers.